Hi everyone, it's Professor Primton, and in this video we're going to talk about the substitution rule and definite integrals. In the previous video, we talked about how to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to determine the value of a definite integral, which represents the area under a curve that's bounded by the x-axis on a closed interval from x equals a to x equals b. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use a substitution rule combined with the fundamental theorem of calculus to find out the area under a curve for a composite function. So let's pick up where we left off, the substitution rule and definite integrals. Sometimes we want to use a substitution rule because we want to evaluate a definite integral that has a composite function for an integrand. We want to be able to reverse the chain rule using the substitution rule that we previously learned in this chapter, but we also want to evaluate what is the area under the curve for that composite function, so we have to evaluate a definite integral. It turns out that there are two different choices for how we can handle limits of integration for definite integrals and when using the substitution rule. We can do either of these, whichever seems better for us. The most important thing that we need to remember is that the original limits of integration were values for the original variable x, but they are not values for the limits of integration whenever we make a substitution for the variable u. So one method is that you can solve the antiderivative as a side problem, translating back to the x's and then using the antiderivative with the original limits of integration. Or the second method, which we're going to use more often, is that you substitute the limits of integration at the same time that we make a substitution from the variable x to the variable u. And then when we find the family of antiderivatives for the integrand by reversing the chain rule, we can skip translating back to x step. So in other words, the original integral has x equals a and x equals b as the endpoints on that closed interval. We're going to make a substitution and change the limits of integration to be in terms of u. If u equals g of x, that's the substitution that we're going to use to simplify the integrands. Then we know we need to take the derivative of u, so you get du dx is g prime of x, the derivative of u. So then you have du equals g prime of x times dx, if you multiply both sides by dx. The new integral will have different endpoints because the integral will be in terms of u now. You'll have one endpoint at u equals g of a. That means that you plug in the lower limit of integration into your substitution, and you get a different lower limit of integration, which will be called g of a, and that'll be a u value. And then the upper limit of integration was x equals b, but if you want to change it in terms of u, then you have to use the substitution to get g of b, and that's going to be the new upper limit of integration. So in other words, you have integrals that are in terms of x to start off with. So you have x equals a to x equals b, and you have some composite function, and the variable of integration is x. You want to make a substitution so that g of x is the inside function. We're going to call that u. So then you have f of u, and we know that we need to replace the dx to be in terms of du, so you'll have f of u times du, but we can't integrate this using x equals a and x equals b because the integral is not in terms of x's anymore. It will be in terms of u. So we have to make the substitution for the lower limit of integration and also the upper limit of integration by plugging a into the substitution. So you'll get g of a, that's your new lower limit of integration. And then you have to plug in x equals b into the substitution to get your new upper limit of integration, which is going to be g of b. So now the entire integral is in terms of u. You have g of a, that's a u value, g of b, that's a u value, f of u, that's some function that depends on u, and the variable of integration is also u. So example five, we're going to illustrate how to use a substitution method with definite integrals. So definite integrals and a substitution method. Evaluate the following definite integrals. Number one, the definite integral from x equals zero to x equals one, the function is three x minus one in parentheses, it's being raised to the fourth power, and the variable of integration is x. Notice we have a composite function. It's not just x to the fourth power, it's a function that's being raised to the fourth power. So we know we need to use the substitution method. So let's start off by using the substitution method we learned earlier. So if you let u be the inside function, so u equals 3x minus 1, we know that we need to take the derivative of u, so du dx is the derivative of 3x minus 1, which is 3. And now you need to multiply both sides of this equation by dx to get du by itself. And so du is equal to 3 times dx. And then if you want to replace the dx in the integral, we need to solve for dx. So dx is equal to, if you divide both sides of this equation by 3, you'll get du divided by 3. So nothing's new so far. We're just using the substitution method to change everything to be in terms of u. What is new, though, is that you need to change the limits of integration to be also to be in terms of u. So the lower limit of integration was x equals 0. So if x is equal 0, then what is the value of u? So then you can find out the value of u by plugging x equals 0 into this expression to find out what is that u value. So u is equal to 3 times 0 minus 1, or u equals negative 1. That is the lower limit of integration because x equals 0 was the lower limit of integration for the original integral. So x equals 0 is now going to be replaced with u equals negative 1. And now do the same thing for the upper limit of integration. If x equals 1 is the upper limit of integration for the original integral, let's find out what is that value for u. So if x equals 1 and u equals 3x minus 1, let's find out the value of u by plugging in x equals 1. So you have u equals 3 times 1 minus 1, 
which is 3 minus 1, or 2. So the upper limit of integration becomes u equals 2. So now let's change everything in terms of the integral from x's to be in terms of u. We know the lower limit of integration is now u equals negative 1, and the upper limit of integration is now u equals 2. But we also have to change the 3x minus 1, which is the inside function, to be in terms of u. So that's now u to the fourth power. And let's replace dx with du divided by 3. So we have the integral from negative 1 to 2 of u to the fourth times du divided by 3. So notice you have a 3 in the denominator. That's just the coefficient that you can factor out. But the 3 is in the denominator, so it's really a 1 third. So you have 1 third integral from negative 1 to 2 of u to the fourth du. So now we're ready to find out the family of integratives. u to the fourth, when the variable of integration is a u, that's a power function. So add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponents. So you have 1 third, that's a coefficient, so you want to keep it. The anterior of u to the fourth was u to the fifth over 5. And now you want to use the fundamental theorem of calculus that we talked about in the previous video by evaluating the antiderivative, evaluate it at the upper limit of integration, which is u equals 2, and the lower limit of integration, which is u equals negative 1. So let's simplify the antiderivative first before we actually plug in the upper limit of integration and the lower limit of integration. You have 1 third times u to the fifth divided by 5. That's really 1 15th u to the fifth power. And now evaluate at u equals 2 and u equals negative 1. So remember how this went in the previous video. The upper limit of integration goes in first, so you get 1 15th times 2 to the 5th power, and then you subtract when you plug in the lower limit of integration, when you plug it in for the variable. So you have 1 15th, negative 1 in parentheses to the 5th power, so you have 1 15th, 2 to the 5th, minus 1 15th times negative 1 to the 5th power, and so 2 to the 5th is 32, so 1 15th times 32, subtract, negative 1 to the 5th power is negative 1, so minus 1 15th times negative 1, and so 32 15ths plus 1 divided by 15, is 33 divided by 15. So that's the area under the curve for this composite function, y equals 3x minus 1 to the fourth power, on the closed interval from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So notice these two methods are being combined. We're using the substitution method to replace the inside function with the u, but we also have to replace the dx with in terms of du. So what's new is that you also have limits of integration for a definite integral, and so if you want to use the fundamental theorem of calculus, the limits of integration must also be in terms of u. So we have to change the limits of integration, which were originally in terms of x's, to be in terms of u. Let's try another problem. Number two, you want to find out the value of the definite integral from x equals 2 to x equals 8 of 1 divided by x plus 1 in the denominator is x plus 1 dx. Notice again that the integrand isn't just a simple function like 1 divided by x. It's 1 divided by a function. So we have to use a substitution method. Let's let u be the inside function, which is the denominator in this case. So u equals x plus 1. We know that we need to take the derivative of u with respect to x, so du dx is the derivative of x is 1, and derivative of 1 is 0, so du dx is 1, or if you multiply both sides of this equation by dx, you get du equals dx. So we know that we're going to replace the 1 divided by x plus 1 with 1 divided by u, and the dx is going to be replaced with du, but the limits of integration were x equals 2 and x equals 8 because the integral was in terms of x's. We need to change those limits of integration to also be in terms of u using the substitution. So if u equals x plus 1, and the lower limit of integration was x equals 2, that means if x is 2, then u must be 2 plus 1, or 3. So 3 is now the lower limit of integration for your integral that in terms of u, and the upper limit of integration was x equals 8, that means that u must be 8 plus 1, or 9. So the upper limit of integration must be u equals 9. So now we can change everything in terms of this integral to be in terms of u. The lower limit is u equals 3, the upper limit is u equals 9, the integrand becomes 1 divided by u, and dx is replaced with du. So it becomes 1 divided by u, du. So this is an integrand that we've seen before. We know the integer of 1 divided by x, dx. It's natural log absolute value of x. So if the variable of integration is u and the function is 1 divided by u, the integer will be natural log absolute value of u, and then we want to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate the integer of with the upper limit and the lower limit of integration. So natural log of absolute value of 9 minus natural log of the absolute value of 3, which is the lower limit of integration, and now the absolute value of 9 is just 9. The absolute value of 3 is 3, so you can drop the absolute values now. It becomes natural log of 9, subtract natural log of 3. And so if you remember a logarithm property from algebra class, if you have a subtraction between logarithms of the same base, then you divide the arguments. That means you can combine this to be one logarithm, one natural log, of 9 divided by 3. You can, and so this simplifies to just natural log of 3. That is the area under the curve, 1 divided by x plus 1, from x equals 2 to x equals 8, bounded by the x-axis. Number 3, let's find out the value of this definite integral from x equals 1 to x equals e of the function natural log of x in parentheses to the fourth power, all divided by x, dx. So notice again that the integrand is a composite function. You have not just 
x to the fourth power, you have a function raised to the fourth power, like natural log. So we want to use a substitution method. Let's let u be the inside function natural log of x. And now we know that we need to take the derivative of u with respect to x. So du dx, what's the derivative of natural log of x? It's 1 divided by x. So du dx is 1 divided by x. And now we know we need to multiply both sides of the equation by dx to get du by itself. So du is equal to 1 divided by x times dx. And then if you want to get dx by itself, multiply both sides of the equation by x. So dx is equal to x times du. So now we should have the integrand in terms of u and also the variable of integration in terms of u. But using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know we have limits of integration that also must be changed to be in terms of u. So if this was x equals 1 and x equals e for the limits of integration, let's change those to be u values. So if x equals 1, let's use a substitution. So if x equals 1, you have u equals natural log of 1. Natural log of 1 is 0. So the lower limit of integration becomes u equals 0. And the upper limit of integration was x equals e. That becomes u equals natural log of e, and natural log of e is just 1. So the upper limit of integration becomes u equals 1. So let's make all the substitutions to make sure this integrand is in terms of u, the variable of integration is in terms of u, and also the limits of integration are also in terms of u. The lower limit of integration becomes u equals 0. The upper limit of integration becomes u equals 1. The natural log of x becomes u, and this was raised to the fourth power, all divided by x. Now that x is not being replaced, but when we replace the dx, notice you have dx is x du. The x's will just cancel out now, and so you have to, everything is in terms of u. So you have the integral from 0 to 1, u to the 4th, x's cancel out, and so you have du. Now notice you have a power function because the variable is u, and the variable of integration is also in terms of u. So let's find the antiderivative of u to the 4th, add 1 to the exponent, and also divide by the new exponent. So you get u to the 5th, divide by 5, that's the antiderivative. And now use the fundamental theorem calculus to evaluate the antiderivative at the upper limit of integration, u equals 1, and the lower limit of integration, u equals 0. So if you plug in u equals 1 into the antiderivative first, you have 1 to the 5th divided by 5. Subtract. When you plug in the lower limit of integration, you have, you have 0 to the 5th divided by 5. So 1 to the 5th power divided by 5 gives you 1 fifth, and 0 to the 5th divided by 5 is 0. And so you get 1 fifth for the value of this definite integral. That's the value of the area under the curve of this function, natural log of x, all to the 4th power divided by x, from x equals 1 to x equals e. Number 4. Let's do the definite integral from x equals 0 to x equals 1 of this integrand, negative 3x squared, all divided by x cubed plus 2 in the denominator dx. So this time the integrand is a rational function, but it's not the rational function 1 divided by x, because we know the integer of 1 divided by x. We know that we need to use the substitution rule because we want to simplify this integrand first. So let's let u be the denominator, x cubed plus 2. Because if you take the derivative of u with respect to x, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Notice you have a 3x squared. Well, yeah, you have a negative 3x squared, but it's 3x squared in the numerator, and you just have that multiplied by negative 1. So that means you're going to have a 3x squared that will cancel out from the numerator and denominator whenever you make all the substitutions in terms of u. So du dx is 3x squared. And now multiply both sides of the equation by dx again. So you get du is equal to 3x squared dx. And now divide both sides of the equation by 3x squared to get dx by itself so that we can replace the dx. So dx is equal to du divided by 3x squared. So now since we're talking about the substitution rule, let's go ahead and change the limits of integration as well. So this is x equals 0 and x equals 1. We needed to change those to be in terms of u also. So if x equals 0, that's the lower limit of integration. Let's plug that into the substitution. So if x is 0, using the substitution, you get 0 cubed plus 2. So u equals 2. That's the new lower limit of integration. So if x equals 1 is the upper limit of integration, let's find out the value for u as well. So if x equals 1 and using this substitution, x cubed plus 2 is u, then u must be 1 cubed plus 2 or 3 if you simplify. So the upper limit of integration is now 3. So now the original integral was in terms of x's. It should be changed to be in terms of u now. So if negative 3x squared, we're not replacing that, so that's going to stay in the numerator. The x cubed plus 2 is what we're going to call u. So u is in the denominator. The lower limit of integration was x equals 0. Now it becomes u equals 2 x equals 1 was the upper limit of integration, now it's u equals 3, and the dx becomes du divided by 3x squared because we saw for dx earlier. So now let's simplify. So notice you have a 3x squared in the numerator and you have a 3x squared in the denominator. The 3x squares will cancel out and so you'll have everything in terms of u. You'll have the integral from 2 to 3, 1 divided by u du, and notice that this negative sign is just a negative 1. That's a coefficient that can be factored outside the integral sign. So we've simplified the integrand to be 1 divided by u, and the variable of integration is u. We know this antiderivative. It's the natural log of the absolute value of u. Keep your negative sign on the outside. And now evaluate using the fundamental theorem calculus, using the upper limit of integration as u equals 3, and the lower limit of integration as u equals 2. So keep in mind, whenever you use the fundamental theorem calculus, you have a minus sign as part of using that theorem. 
So you have a minus sign as part of the antiderivative as well. So be very careful with the negative signs. So whenever you plug in u equals 3 as the upper limit of integration into the antiderivative first, you would have negative on the outside, natural log of absolute value of 3 minus, that's from the fundamental theorem calculus, then the lower limit of integration plugged into the antiderivative. You get natural log of absolute value of 2. So now we're ready to take the absolute value of 3. That's just 3. So you have natural log of 3. The natural log of absolute value of 2 just becomes natural log of 2. And then you have the negative on the outside that you want to keep. So now distribute the negative 1 that's from the outside through the parentheses. So you have negative natural log of 3 and plus natural log of 2. And so this is natural log of 2. Subtract so natural log of 3. This answer represents the area that's under the curve y equals negative 3x squared all divided by x cubed plus 2 from x equals 0 to x equals 1, bounded by the x-axis. Let's try one more. Number 5, the integral from negative 1 to 0 of negative x e to negative x squared power dx. So this time we have an exponential function, but it's not just e to the x, it's e to the function negative x squared. So that means we need to use a substitution rule. So notice we have u is going to be the exponent because that's the inside function. So u equals negative x squared. We know that we need to take the derivative of u with respect to x. So du dx is, is the derivative of negative x squared. That's negative 2x using the power rule for derivatives. And so now solve for du. Now multiply both sides of the equation by dx to get du by itself on one side of the equation. So du is equal to negative 2x times dx. Now solve for dx by dividing both sides of the equation by negative 2x. So dx is equal to du divided by negative 2x. So that takes care of everything in terms of u, with the integrand and the variable of integration is now going to be in terms of u, but the limits of integration must also be in terms of u as well. So if this was x equals negative 1 for the lower limit of integration, let's find out the new lower limit of integration to be in terms of u. So if x equals negative 1 and the substitution is u equals negative x squared, that means u is equal to the opposite of x is now negative 1 in parentheses that's being squared. So you have the opposite of negative 1 squared, Negative 1 squared is 1, so you have negative 1 for the u. So u equals negative 1 is the lower limit of integration. And now x equals 0. Let's find out the limit of integration in terms of u. So if x equals 0 and u equals negative x squared, you have u equals negative 0 squared. 0 squared is 0, so this is the opposite of 0 or just 0. So notice it was x equals 0 was the upper limit of integration. It becomes u equals 0 when you change the limits of integration to be in terms of u. So now let's change the integrand to also be in terms of u, and the variable of integration also to be in terms of u. So the negative x is going to stay. We're not replacing it, but we're replacing negative x squared in the exponent on e. So this becomes e to the u in the integrand, and then we have to replace the dx to be in terms of du. Well, dx is du divided by negative 2x. So you'll have integral from negative 1 to 0, that's u equals negative 1 du equals 0, of negative x e to the u du divided by negative 2x. Again, notice that the x's will cancel out, and so the integrand will only be in terms of u. You have x divided by x, the x's will cancel out, and also you have a negative divided by negative that will become a positive. So you have the integral from u equals negative 1 to u equals 0 of 1 half, because the 2's in the denominator, e to the u du. We know the family of integrals for e to the u. It's e to the u. So you'll have 1 half, that's the coefficient, so you want to keep it. The integral of e to the u is e to the u itself. And now evaluate using the fundamental theorem calculus where u equals 0 and u equals negative 1. And so plug in the upper limit of integration first. You'll have 1 half e, and then u is replaced in the exponent with a 0, so 1 half e to the 0 power. Subtract 1 half when you plug in the lower limit of integration in for the exponent u. You'll have 1 half e to the negative 1 power. So 1 half times e to the 0 is 1, so 1 half times 1, minus 1 half e to negative 1. And so 1 half times 1 is 1 half, minus 1 half e to negative 1. If you have a negative exponent, that's really in the denominator. So this second term is really 1 divided by 2e. And then if you want to simplify this, get a common denominator of 2e. So this first fraction needs an e in the denominator and also the numerator. So it will become e divided by 2e minus 1 divided by 2e. And so this is the area under the curve. e minus 1 in the numerator, all divided by the common denominator of 2e. And so that represents the area under the curve of this function, y equals negative x, e to negative x squared, from x equals negative 1 to x equals 0, and also bounded by the x-axis. So this is a good place to stop now that we talked about how to use the substitution method with the fundamental theorem of calculus. You have to change the integrand to be in terms of u, so that we can find the family of integrals in terms of u. We also have to change the variable of integration from dx to be in terms of du. But what's new is that we also have to change the limits of integration, but we also know now that we have to use the substitution method to change the limits of integration from x values to now u values. So if you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while we work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about applications for definite integrals.